In this video, I'm going to show you how to run the best offense and defense in Madden 21. What's up guys, my name is Cody and I want to thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Now if you're new to the channel and you don't know what my channel is all about, my channel is all about how to become a better Madden player in Madden 21. And if you haven't subscribed yet, it's completely free to do so and you can hit the subscribe button at the bottom right hand corner of your screen. We upload videos every single day and so if you never want to, really, never want to miss uh, one of our most recent uploads, go ahead and make sure that you're hitting that subscribe button but also make sure that you hit that notification bell icon. Uh, at the bottom right hand corner of your screen that way you never miss one of the videos all right guys so on offense i am running my bunch ebook that i just released if you want to get the ebook it is in the description uh, of this video and then if you are on on defense i'm running the four six three three five wide defense which in my opinion is the best defense in the game and running it since june of 2020 and if you want to get my full ebook on that it's just 15 dollars and it's in the description as well. It's gonna show you how to basically stop pretty much everything that anybody can do um, on the offensive side of the ball. Very, very effective defense this season. And uh, in my opinion, just the best, the best defense. Um, and then offensively, we're running bunch and bunch tight end. Again, if you wanna get that ebook, it's in the description for also just 15 bucks um, for just the bunch ebook. So uh, that's what we got on that front. Um, if you have any questions about anything that you see in the video, uh, go ahead and basically just text those over to me. My number will be in the top uh, right hand corner of your screen. And it looks like my opponent's going to be running the New England Patriots offensive playbook. So we're going to start out just with some simple man coverage, just kind of see how he's going uh, as far as that as he have his man beaters down. And it looks like they're a little tight end drag route. I always like to start out with a little bit of man coverage, just kind of see, you know, what's happening in the first possession. And then throughout the game, I will definitely adjust. You saw that I did set my zone drops. Um, so it doesn't, I'm probably not going to be running a ton of match coverage this game. Uh, I'm going to look a lot of different things. They've actually put a patch out uh, for the cover three defense. And so looking to potentially run some of that as well in this game. And it looks like my opponent is going to the U-Trips formation, one of the best formations in the game. And as you can see here, um, one of the mistakes I just made right there, get the three record. I didn't get the hook zone out. Um, let my when I go go get him. Unfortunately, I put my user on a blitz, but he didn't end up going to the quarterback. Unfortunately, on that play. Now, first drive, as you can see here, I'm just kind of, um, you know, just kind of filling my opponent out. Gonna run some, you know, not gonna do anything too crazy uh, with the defense here. Just gonna kind of keep it simple. Looks like this is probably halfback wham uh, right there. A little bunch, a little single back bunch, uh, halfback wham there for my opponent. So, you know, as the game goes on, you know, just kind of trying to see tendencies and just kind of trying to fill them out a little bit. Now, right here, probably going to go back into that U trips. Uh, one of the things that I am doing is that I didn't hit on yet is I actually am shading down and shading up. And the reason why I'm doing that is so that the, the flat zones that are set to 30 yards are coming from corners. They're not coming from linebackers. They're going to play a little bit better against crossing routes if you do it that way. And then I'm just basically putting seam flats out there on my own. I'm going to go ahead and send that guy at the quarterback. And it looks like he's going to run and scramble out with Mahomes. It appears that scrambling with Mahomes is going to be one of his strategies um, throughout this game. So I might mix it up, go with some different defenses right here. I'm going to go to some pressure out of that Mike Blitz 3, especially for this under center situation. Now, more than likely, he's going to run the ball. Um, nope, he didn't. And I got him with the user rush right there. And that's one of the best little user rushes in the entire game. We teach you how to do that out of 3 3 5 wide. Um, now, right here. Um, honestly, we're going to probably uh, send some pressure at him again. Just kind of let him know uh, that we are coming for him there. We did get the pressure, get the SWAT, and we're going to get the stop. And we're going to be able to get the ball back on the offensive side of the ball. Now, like I said, on offense, I am running the New York Jets uh, offensive playbook. It's probably the best offensive playbook uh, in the game, at least right now. Uh, it's just a phenomenal, phenomenal offensive playbook. There's so many things um, in it that are very, very effective uh, that you can use to your advantage here. So I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of set my depth chart up like I want it. And then the main play that I actually like to run the most is I absolutely love the flood play. I love the flood passing concept. It's probably my favorite concept in the game. If they blitz me, um, if they, you know, I just have quick reads everywhere. Um, you see there, just a little quick five and out. It's actually a really good little read um, if they're backed off. If I get backed off coverage, a lot of times I will run that little quick out. You know, just kind of keep that simple. 
Um, if he's going to play 3-3, three, three, if he, you see here, he's playing 3-4 odd. What I like to do when I see 3-4 odd is I almost always will go to this boot over. And the reason why is because against 3-4 odd, you see a lot of the same kind of stuff here. He doesn't have the covers that he needs. We're going to hit him over the top and dot him up with the crossing route to Devontae Adams. And that's why I like the Jets playbook. It's because you have trips tied in, bunch tied in, and bunch all rolled in with one playbook. You also have some decent under center formations you can hobble down to. You can hobble down to single back wide trips, single back doubles that are probably two of the better under center formations to run out of, out of a three wide receiver set because you have a one trap, you have stretch, you have power O, you have all the major running concepts that you need to be successful. Combining that with all these big, big, big passing concepts that we're able to have, we're able to have some really good crossing routes, we're able to have some really good corner routes, uh, in this offense, so some very, very solid uh, material in that New York Jets ebook. And like I said, if you want to get that, that is in the description. So defensively here, um, we're just going to kind of go back to the bread and butter. More than likely, you're going to see a lot of cover three uh, from me for the next, at least for the next week or so, kind of testing it out a little bit again. Um, they actually put out a big time patch to the cover three and a little run there off the jump. Actually, a really good run call. He ends up getting me with the 0 1 trap. And. Um, one of the things that is definitely unique out of the New England playbook, whenever they run that U trips formation, is you definitely have to be mindful uh, of the 01 trap. It's one of the better runs in the game. And all it amounts to, as you see here, just standing in a different spot with your user to stop that than you normally would. Um, so whenever I see U trips, I just have to be mindful of that. I can't do what I what I normally do. So, anyways, right here he's going to go to, to trips tight end, uh, kind of setting up our coverage here. He's doing a lot of quick snapping, which I don't really like that uh, when someone does that. As you can see there, goes on the sideline, and he's one of three for two yards passing. What he wants to do, and you say, you talk about tendencies, got him in a third down and seven once again. He hasn't liked the pressure when I've sent it at him. So, right here, we're going to send some pretty heavy pressure at him again. And if he puts everybody out on a route, we're going to run right down the middle as we do right there and get that instant sack that's going to put him in a fourth and 16 situation and really the see here the key of just timing timing your pressure you know timing your pressure is really helping me right now and all right here um we're actually going to drop drop a zone that's probably not a great decision but we ends up working out for us we get the swat and i knew i needed to go to man coverage i've been in cover three twice i knew i needed to go into man coverage one of the things that is super underrated in Madden is mixing up your coverages. If you're playing someone that knows what they're doing offensively, you know, you can't just sit in the same coverage all game, even if it's a really good defense, you have to consistently move it, you know, change it up and uh, and move around a little bit. So right here, going to flood, uh, end up taking these quick flats. One of the things that people don't do a lot in Madden 21 um, is a lot of people don't realize how good the flats are like late in the play. And what I mean by that is that situation right there. So just a simple little swing route, a little flat route. It'll sit on that sideline uh, fairly, fairly uh, well for you. So you can hit that if you ever need to. And that's why I like flood a lot out of this play. Um, you have two flat routes on both sides if you want to put that running back on a little swing route or a little table route. Ideally, I would put the running back on a table route almost every time. Um, but I don't have hot route master, so I'm just using this little hot routed swing pass. As you can see, the swing pass is not too bad. Um, you see they're just getting a couple quick yards, scampering up and getting ourselves in a good position. Now, if you have any questions or if you want to get my full um, offenses and defenses that I release every single week into my text message membership playlist, that's available uh, just by texting me. My number's at the top right-hand corner of your screen. All you have to do is text the word MADDEN to 208-218-6900. And that will get you the playlist. It'll automatically send it to you each week whenever I update it. Got an update coming out for you guys probably tonight um, on this, which is actually some really good stuff that I'm doing offensively. So if you want to get access to that, um, again, that's how you get that. But there you see, there's Flood doing its thing. And, and we actually spend, in the ebook, we actually spend probably an hour, an, almost an hour talking about different quick passes out of the gun bunch, different ways to master those flat routes so that you don't throw interceptions just really how to use that offense really well. So uh, obviously the guide is about seven hours long, but the, you know, we spent a significant amount of time teaching you the ins and outs of the flats and making the flats be a very big time priority uh, in your offense. And as you see right there, it goes right in for a touchdown and we're back on the defensive side of the ball. Now classic us, we're not able to kick a field goal to save our life, but we are gonna jump back onto the defensive side of the ball. We got a 14, or 13 to nothing advantage. 
and we're playing good ball right now. Uh, really what we're trying to do is we're trying to get to a 17 point advantage by halftime. If we can get to a 17 point advantage by half, um, that's going to put us in a really good position. So here we got cover three. Uh, we need to shift that D line back over and right here, a little play action, a little streak. Gonna hit. He's going to take his flat. And I think if you saw right, I have my curl flats on 10 yards. The reason why is I noticed that, and again, this is just me. If they don't, a, a lot of people don't like to throw the flats, right? I like to throw the flats, but a lot of people that I play, they don't actually like to throw the flats this year. And it's actually kind of a mistake in my opinion. But anyways, um, when you put your curl flats on 10 yards, it actually does a decent job. And as you see there, we're just kind of putting the pressure on him, just kind of making him feel it a little bit, you know, making him feel it in the pocket. And now we're actually going to go in the third down and seven situation. We're going to go to a little bit of max coverage. Uh, and the reason why is because we've applied pressure pretty much every time. And we're just going to do something a little bit different here. So we're watching a little Mabel coverage on the outside. Unfortunately, King's not able to get out there. Good dot by my opponent. And, um, and he's not really we might actually have to change our our flat zones uh back to another a little bit of a different depth but we'll see here a little quick flat to the back and we're trying to get a hit stick there we just missed him and good read by my opponent and i think we're gonna have to move uh a little bit here we're gonna drop these back down to 25 he's not running any major he's just not running any of the major routes that he would need to run so we're gonna go to this right here a uh, little five wide empty base flex you got to be expecting verticals um right here for my opponent throws it right to me and that's pretty decent uh user he had the tight end there uh good stick work to get me turned around in the right direction and we're gonna hopefully be able to get in here for seven even though mccall harman is super fast we are able to get in for seven that's gonna put us in a three possession advantage and really give us control of this game uh, from a defensive perspective, we're going to be able to kind of hopefully just seal off the victory from this point forward. But, you know, overall, you know, my opponent ran at a very interesting pace, a lot of quick snaps. Um, you know, one of the things that you've got to do when you're playing someone that kind of just comes up snaps, kind of just comes up snaps, you know, they're not doing a ton of stuff pre-snap. That tells you pretty quickly that what you need to do is just simply adjust, mix up your coverages, you know, go from a cover three to a cover two to a cover four to a cover six to a man coverage and, and different things like that that will help a little bit but anyway here we go he's going to go back to that split close that's the formation he's had the most uh success with to this point so we're going to kind of set that defense up again there's a little quick flat and that's what that's what he needs to be doing more of we're in we're in an all out you know kind of pre not pre-event but we're definitely protecting uh for the deep sideline so it was definitely be in his best interest to go ahead um you know and just kind of just work it up the field a little bit here a little quick run you know and the run game's been good for him does get a good little gain right there now he does need to score on this drive and i believe he gets i get ball at halftime so this is a critical drive now if he can go down and score you know and get a stop uh he's going to be in good position so offensively we just need to keep scoring um keep that keep that going and right there just missed the user pick on him uh that was a little bit i got kind of quick snapped and again uh, caught off guard a little bit and that's kind of what you see as a theme uh, with this guy so far is just that quick hike you know trying to get things off quick so like right here uh, we're going to send a little bit more pressure at him uh, and just kind of let him know you know again we had sudden pressure hadn't sent pressure hadn't sent pressure then we send pressure that's the beauty of the 335 wide is it can do literally everything that you want it to be able to do now here we haven't we don't normally send pressure twice in a row so we are going to send some pressure here try to recover on that tight end got the middle third in the middle of the field dropped an interception but i have my paws on it and uh good defense right there trying to get the uh trying to get the stop now again if you have not subscribed yet it is completely free to do that um all you gotta do is hit that subscribe button at the bottom of the right hand corner of your screen now right here we could be a little vulnerable to the seams so what we're gonna do is we're gonna man up onto the people that we think could be on a seam and of course not a little too little too late tyree kill 99 speed gets out on us a little bit in my opinion i don't know how he got that middle third to hold so well but he did get that middle third to hold um and so we've got to you know obviously adjust here now uh, right here we're gonna basically try to get some pressure uh right there good defense by uh my 29 holman when you get in the red zone i like to change my zone drops to five and ten um sometimes i even literally will change it we're actually going to change it here we're gonna put our curl flats on zero and our flats on 10 yards it's gonna be hard to kind of fit anything in quick here you know just trying to kind of keep things in, underneath here 
But right here, we're going to send some pressure. And we got there, got the tackle. Now that's going to force him to make a decision. Is he going to go for this, or is he going to kick for it? Doesn't even have to make a decision. He is going to end up going for it here. And again, I'm just putting, you know, clouds and, you know, just no deep zones, really. Even though deep zones do definitely play good uh, against this. Now, right here, this is an interesting audible around here. So we're just going to kind of sit right in this little pocket. And he is going to go ahead and get a touchdown. Good drive by him to end the half. And he did what he needed to do to get himself back in this ball game. We have to go down. We don't have to score. I mean, we, we really do kind of have to score seven because of our missed field goal. We're not going to be in a situation where we can get up 17 if we go down and score a field goal here. So this next drive is actually really important. We're trying to get to a 17-point advantage. You know, so we've got to go down uh, and, and, and ideally get, uh, get a touchdown on this next drive coming out of half. Now, very likely that he might onside kick it. It does look like he did go ahead and hit the kickoff button. So he's going to kick it deep to us. We're going to get the opportunity to get the ball here um, in the second half and just try to get it, kind of consistently put that drive together. You know, offensively, we've been pretty crisp, pretty clean, um, you know, for, for kind of what he's what he's been doing. A little stick move there, a little stick move there. Uh, pretty good stick work right there by Tavon Austin, getting him out to the 25. We did a lot of work for a little bit. Um, but anyways, we're going to jump out here into the bunch, and you're going to see a little bit more uh, – now, what I'm going to do here to start out the, the half um, is I am going to go ahead and just start out with a little bit of a, a little bit of a bomb play here. Just kind of see, you know, what my opponent's doing, and we're just going to throw this one away. But I just wanted to kind of see, you know, what is he doing defensively? It looked right, looked like right there he had the right call on. I thought it was cover two, um, and I think it's going to be cover two again. So I'm going to go to this little quick. Smash return type play here. A little block and release route, a little drag route here. I'm looking for that tight end. And I got him right there on that rack catch. Good read. Clean read. And uh, got a nice little first down right there. So he's got more zones. When people run um, defense against Gun Bunch, you're going to notice that there's one or two areas that they're really going to probably, probably like to defend. They're either going to like to defend the middle or they're going to like to try to defend the sideline. So like right here, and that was just bad. Bad, 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 bad pocket right there. I shouldn't have flowed like that. I don't know what I was thinking. i got to stand strong in the pocket. Make a read. Now, second and ten here. I'm uh, going to go ahead and put that drag right out there and just kind of sit. Now here, you're going to see I'm going to do a little bit better of a job of sitting Climbing the pocket, climbing the pocket. Chris Jones eats my lunch. That's the play that he needed. And this cover two defense that he is running is giving me a little trouble. I'm going to go to one of my cover, my favorite cover two beaters. We'll see what he does here. But the circle receiver should be open deep. He is able to hit him on the sideline. And that's why that play right there is probably the number one reason why I like the Jets playbook so much um, from a perspective of just like a playbook to run. That makes this playbook so, so much better um, than, it, than it would be without it. That mesh concept, that mesh play. Uh, and right here, um, really a bad, honestly, probably a little bit of a bad read right there. And I was trying to hit that, trying to hit that route, but just not, didn't have the window. Um, he's running cover two stock. Um, so literally not making a whole lot of adjustments. Here I'm gonna try to hit the square receiver. Um, not able to hit him, but I am able to hit that trail route right over the middle. Robert Tunyon dot touchdown. That's exactly what we needed. Um, and we're going to go for two here. Try to close this out a little bit. Try to get us in a good position um, and, and see what we can do. I'm going to go to mesh post. Mesh, po mesh post is my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite red zone play uh, in this game. It's, it's literally the play that I'm going to call, you know, nine times out of, out of ten uh, down here in the red zone just because of how good of a job. Uh, it really does do. Uh, and of course, as soon as I say that, we're actually going to get dotted. Tavon Austin's going to drop the, the uh, two-point conversion. And he's going to hang around. Now, we are up 17, so we're still up three possessions. He does get ball back. It'll be interesting to see what he runs. We are going to need to make sure to remind ourselves, once we get into the pre-snap menu, to change our zone drops. But... All in all, a decent drive. I probably missed the read. He's doing a lot more with the yellow zones out of that cover two defense. So that has definitely given me a little bit of trick, uh, just a little bit of challenge uh, so far in this game. So anyways, he's going to go back to that split close pats. 
Uh, we're going to go back to that, you know, two-man rush, a little more zone coverage. Got a little quick screen, and there you see there's that 10-yard cl yard curl flat doing its thing, getting in a good position. And defensively, we've been pretty solid. I feel like we've been pretty solid. We forced him to earn everything that he's had. You know, we kind of gave him that touchdown at the end of the half, honestly. So, like right here, here you're going to see a little bit more pressure uh, on the outside. See here, just kind of force some issue, force the issue a little bit, and a little bit late on that crosser, and good read by my opponent, able to hit that, and and that was just a mistake on my adjustments. I didn't mean to shade those things down, um, so that they became cloud flats. I actually wanted to keep the to keep the the seam flats out there, so that was a little bit of a mistake on my behalf or my part. And we'll see what we can do here. We're gonna try to just get some pressure if he does if he does pass. Um, it looks like he is going to go ahead and run the ball here. And running the ball here is really what we want him to do. The clock is tick, 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 ticking. Another thing from a game management perspective is you really want to be just kind of keeping it really, really simple, in my opinion, in these situations. So, like, right here, you're going to see I've got everything manned up. And I have a little three wreck right here on the field. I'm going to take that crossing route and pretty good defense there. Forced him, flushed him, got him out of the pocket. The only thing I forgot to do was spy somebody and uh, he's going to scamper out there with Mahomes and get a pretty nice little game. Now, old one trap here. Pretty confident if he does run this. Uh, he's not going to. He's going to go back to his play. We drill Tyreek Hill. Absolutely annihilate him, but he still ends up holding on to it. Level sale has kind of been this guy's uh, bread and butter from that A slot offset. So, anyways, here he's going to go to three by, just three by one, little trips flex formation. Probably going to have some PA crossers, it would be my idea. Uh, maybe some sale. We'll see what happens here on this. It looks like uh, And there's several different plays on New England that are fairly effective here. But it's going to go to a quick flat here. I thought it might have been the flood play, but good job by him. And uh, you see, though, one of the things that I think is actually really good about the defense here is we're forcing him to work. We're forcing him to take his time. We're forcing him to have to really work the ball up and down the field. He's not getting into one play. You know, he's not. He, he's having to take his check down, roll out. You know, so you can't be mad at the defense right now. They're doing their job. They're just keeping everything in front of them, making that clock work a little bit, take time off the clock, and then hopefully, as we kind of come into this red zone opportunity here for the offense, we've got to clamp down defensively and just force him to have to work. We're going to try to push the pocket a little bit here uh, and just go get him. And there, another middle of the field pass. And as you'll see, this will take another 40 seconds off the play clock. Now, what we're going to do here on this next play is we are going to shift it up a little bit here. And we are actually going to send heavy, heavy pressure um, out of that Mike Blitz zero. And we're going to try to just take jump the back and try to jump back on the slant. And overall, that was fairly decent defense. Now, we're in a red zone position. And as you see here, I'm going to go ahead and back these off. I'm going to put those curl flats on zero, hooks on 10. I'm actually going to put the flats up to 15. Um, I might regret that, but we're going to roll with that for right here and right now. And i uh, got to watch out for that... Uh, and he's going to go ahead and take off with Mahomes. And he's going to get in for six. So good drive by my opponent. It did take him a lot of time. Offensively, now we have to look to close here. This is a closing drive. This is where they talk about four-minute offense in the NFL. This is that opportunity. Can you close out the game with a couple first downs? That's the beauty of the Jets playbook, to be honest with you. It's actually probably the number one thing that I like about this playbook is, in theory, and the way this four-minute offense should work, my opponent should not get the ball back. Uh, we should be able to clock this out and just go ahead and get maybe one or two first downs and say GG's to my opponent. So right here, we're not going to do anything fancy. We're just going right out of bounds. We're not going to risk taking a, taking a tackle uh, or taking a hit. We're going to go on conservative, ball carrier. And then I'm gonna, you're going to notice here that I'm going to go ahead and begin setting up kind of that clock formation uh, to hopefully put this game away. And the beauty of this is it all happens from the same package. It all happens from the, the bunch. It all happens from this three wide receiver set. So like right here, just going to kind of hit him with this RPO out of the trips tight end offset. This RPO trap is absolutely incredible out of this formation. And as you see right here, I mean, just going to kind of get up, scamper for a good first down gain. And now you're going to see that, you know, we don't even have to put two clock on. And I don't like to have two clock on. I think it runs enough time off in general. As you see now, I have 20 seconds to kind of figure out where I want to go, what I want to do, and how I want to attack this. 
Um, more than likely, what we're going to do on this next try, just kind of check and see how does he do against inside zone, how does he do against this, that, and the other thing. So as you'll see right here, we're going to go inside zone, we're going to go a little motion out, and just kind of see you know, how he, how he does against that. We're just trying to scamper up for a little bit, a couple yards quick, and then get back to the huddle. And that's where this is, that four-minute offense, that four-minute offense just simply working the ball up and down the field here. This right here should be the last play before the two-minute warning, uh, and then we're going to be in a situation where we just got to take his timeouts uh, quickly. Now, what you will see occasionally is you'll see I'll go to something like this level sale play here. Might you know might throw a little quick flat route or something, but all in all, and we are just going to keep it on the ground and get to the two-minute warning. And now you will see a little bit of chew clock, just kind of get it down to that two-minute warning situation. And again, all we really need, uh, we want to get, we want to get seven, obviously on the stride, but we really just want to kind of finish the game. We just want to kind of close the game out. He hasn't shown a great ability to be able to stop this RPO bubble, um, so we're just going to keep hounding it uh, a little bit here. Now, what I like to do uh, when I know that they're kind of using some of this, these drops and things that my opponent's using here, um, that's where I'll kind of do some motion tricks. You know, just to kind of get a little bit better blocking, as you see there, there's the timeout. And obviously, he is going to start taking his timeouts. Now, if we get into a situation, um, if we do get into a situation, you know, where it's a third down type of thing, then I will probably go ahead and go to the air. One of the things you see is you notice just how the, how the players are moving, how everything's going here. So where are we going to have to run? Well, based on the alignment, that's going to obviously tell us you see some of the different motions. Uh, and things that we, we see right there. Little little stop and go, get us down, get us into feel, almost field goal range, and now put us in a position where we can really work some clock, um, you know, and just take the clock really quickly here. And one first down and it should do it. So like I said, if you wanna get that full ebook um, on the gun bunch, that is in the description. Uh, shows you everything you need to know out of this New York Jets offensive playbook. In my opinion, the Jets offensive playbook is absolutely the best playbook in the game right now. It has bunch, it has bunch tight end. It's everything you need to be effective with that trips tight end offset. You can, I mean, I haven't even, um, I haven't honestly even learned a ton of things. Um, I know there's going to be a ton of things to, you know, more to master and learn out of that trips tight end offset with the passing concepts that you can be able to arc, you know, kind of dot up a little bit out of that trips tight end because it's going to be very similar to the, you know, the, the, the trips tight end that we know and love out of the uh, Raiders playbook. So that could be exactly the same, but there are going to be a lot of things that carry over like corner routes and just different, different opportunities like that. So one first down here, we should be able to cook this game. We're going to go to that RBO trap one more time. And as you see, we're able to scamper up, get the first down and that is going to do it. I want to thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching the offense go to work. Hope you enjoyed watching the defense. If you want to get either of my offensive scheme, or my defensive scheme both schemes are available in the description of this video my offense is just 15 bucks and my defense is just 15 bucks as well if you want to get my bunch and my bunch tight end guide together as a bundle uh, and run them both from the new york jets playbook that is just 20 bucks over 80 pages of material with over uh seven and a half hours of video content thanks for your time i hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions you can always text me my number is 208-218-6900 and like i said the ebook links are in the description if you want to learn exactly what i run in madden 21.